the sea in my house. George truly believed that his kitchen was the sea. The walls were painted blue and white, blue up to about halfway and then white up to the ceiling. That is why George used to always put his snorkeling mask on to go down to breakfast. He really believed that his kitchen was the ocean, complete with salty water, islands and even the odd pirate ship. I'm going into the sea, he would say to his dad, and everyone would know that George was on his way to the kitchen. For him, the kitchen was the sea, because the bottom half of the walls were painted blue. George would take his shoes off and put on his snorkeling mask in order to go on the water. And he would swim around quite happily without getting wet in his very own private ocean. He would sometimes paint fish on the blue part of the wall with his felt-tip pens. And in summer, he would spread the winkles and starfish he found on the beach all over the kitchen floor. For George, the kitchen floor was the deep, dark depths of the sea. And that, of course, is where winkles and starfish live. George's mom would get very angry when she arrived home to find the kitchen floor covered with winkles and starfish. She would also get angry when she saw the kitchen walls full of drawings of fish. Oh, George, have you been drawing again? She would cry. How many times do I have to tell you not to draw on the kitchen walls? It's not the kitchen, mom. It's the sea. George would reply. Well, I don't like those fish one little bit. His mother would often get angry with George, but George almost never got angry himself. He had a lot of patience and knew full well that you should not get angry unless you have a very good reason to. And he did not think that fish in the sea was anything to get angry about. So he would calmly say to his mother, don't worry, mom. The fish will go away to sleep when it gets dark. <laughs> Was all his mother would say in reply. His mother did not understand that you should not get angry unless you have a really good reason. George did not know what grrrr meant. So he looked it up in the dictionary without getting angry, needless to say. He knew you should not get angry over silly little things, such as, for example, some fish swimming in the kitchen. However, although he found Greenland and Grub, he could not find grrrr. This dictionary is wrong, he thought to himself. Our teacher says that all the words are in the dictionary, but grrr was not there. So he took the pen and wrote grrr next to grab. Then he put the dictionary on the top shelf in the kitchen so that it would not get wet when the tide came in. George's mother's name was Elena. All mothers have their own individual names, you know, although children often forget this. One day, Elena 
bought a super duper ultra modern stain remover from the hypermarket to clean the kitchen walls. She wrapped and wrapped and wrapped until her arm ached and eventually managed to get rid of all the fish. Then she gathered up the winkles and starfish and put them away, muttering grrrr, under her breath the entire time. George woke up next morning, his mom and dad were in the kitchen making breakfast. They stared at him in surprise as he came through the door. What on earth are you doing with your snorkeling mask on? asked his mom. The tide's high today, mom. That's why the fish have all swum away. George's mother started muttering under her breath again. Oh, honestly, George, can't you see that it was me who wrapped them off with the super duper ultra modern stain remover I bought in the supermarket? I spent all the afternoon cleaning these walls. But George knew what had really happened. He knew that the fish had swum away of their own accord. But even so, he did not get angry with his mother. George would sometimes go into the kitchen with his fishing rod and cast the hook over the balcony to see if he could catch a fish or something. He did not usually have much luck, but one day he managed to catch a fat lady's hat. The hat looked a bit like an octopus, so George ran into his mother and said, Look, mom, I caught an octopus. Oh, really, George? Where on earth did you get that hat? His mother replied, It's not a hat, mom. It's an octopus. Octopus or not, the fat lady was soon knocking on the door. George's mother apologized and gave her back her hat. Why is that lady wearing an octopus on her head, mom? Asked George. How many times do I have to tell you it's not an octopus? It's a hat, George, a hat. George's mom decided to speak with his dad, who was called Peyo, about George's strange habits. child is not normal, always thinking about his imaginary sea. Don't worry, love, replied Peyo, George's father. He just got a good imagination, that's all. It's not bad to have a good imagination. We're going to have to paint the kitchen walls another color. That would put paint to this sea business. I want a normal child. George was listening to every word through a crack in the, in the door. This is not at all unusual. Parents often think that children do not listen to anything, but children love listening through cracks. And cracks seem to have been made just for children too. George loved cracks almost as much as he loved the ocean that was in his kitchen. He was very upset when he heard his mother's word. I want a normal child. Wasn't he a normal child then? Why not? Because he loved the sea? One day, when George came home from school, a painter answered the door. You can come into the kitchen, lad. We're busy painting, he said. But George did not want to go into the kitchen. He wanted to go into the sea. That is why he had his fishing rod in his hand. He wanted to catch an octopus or some other fish. But the painter would not let him in. In the end, he put his snorkeling mask on and managed to sneak into the kitchen. He could not believe his eyes. 
The kitchen walls were yellow, not blue sea anymore. George's parents were worried that he might be angry that they had painted over the blue walls. But George was not a child who got angry just like that at the drop of a hat. Instead, he became very thoughtful. Hmm. The kitchen sea has dried up, he said eventually. And then disappeared off into his room, as silently as a mouse. That night, after peeping through the crack of the door to make sure no one was around, George crept into the kitchen with his pen. When his mother woke up next morning, she found the kitchen floor covered in fish. She had never seen so many fish in the kitchen before, but now, instead of being drawn on the walls, they were all over the floor. <laughs> what have you been up to? She asked George angrily. The sea dried up, so all the fish are dead, George replied. Since Elena had got to work, she gave Peyo the super duper ultra modern stain remover and told him to get rid of the fish. And that is just what he did. But George's imagination was much too strong to be defeated even by a super duper ultra modern stain remover. That same afternoon, he wrapped the kitchen curtains around his head like a turban took his pen and drew a camel and some palm trees on the newly painted yellow kitchen walls. What is that child up to now? Elena asked when she came home from work. Apparently, we are in Arabia now. He says the sea has dried up and become a desert, answered Bea shrugging his shoulders. Oh, dang! We should have painted the walls green, not yellow! exclaimed George's mother. George's imagination was much too strong to be defeated by a super duper ultra modern stain remover, or by yellow or green paint either. And that is how George's Kitchen Sea became a desert, with a little bit of imagination. That was how the fish disappeared and George's new friend, the camel, arrived. Yes, that was how it happened. Well, more or less anyway. <laughs>